Yes. All right. And then the second thing is just an observation, I guess. And a, it's a question. Uh, I, can, I can tell by this unruly crowd here that it was uh, a good idea to have several police cars out front. <laughs> so my question is, speaking of exiting oh, on Ashby, speaking of cars racing up and down Roxton and Albans and balls over and wherever, will the city dedicate police officers 24 hours a day to enforce what you have required? Thank you. I, I wanted to wait for the clapping and, and uh, no, sir, that I cannot commit to doing. Sir. Uh, Mayor and Mr. Feldman, thank you for receiving us uh, this evening and listening to our concerns. I want to echo several uh, comments and observations that have been made earlier in the evening, particularly with respect to traffic control. What I have not heard addressed this evening is how the tenants of this apartment project will exit westbound on Bissonette. As I understand it, the only exit, uh, I'm sorry, how they will enter this property off of Bissonette. My understanding is that they can exit onto Ashby or they can exit onto Bissonette. I live next door at the terminus of Dunleavy and Bissonette. It is now impossible most days to exit and turn west on Bissonette because of oncoming traffic. When I came home on Friday night, when the light turned at Mandel, the traffic backed up to Woodhead. If I were a tenant in that apartment project and I was westbound on Bissonette and seeking entry into this project, why are the Buckheads not funding a traffic light either at Ashby or at Dunleavy as a traffic control measure, or why is the city not requiring that they engage the services of off-duty police officers to control ingress and egress to that property so that there will not be undue uh, constraints on the flow of traffic on Bissonette? As I indicated, I spent quite a bit of time out by the site yesterday. Well, I wish I'd known you were going to be there. I would have enjoyed showing well, you around. I, I wore a mask, so nobody would know who I was. They, well, I'm glad uh, you could come well, one before of the, the settlement that, was delivered. Candidly and quickly, one of the things that I observed is that, oh, wow, going west is not going to be easy getting into this this project. Uh, and that's if I was going to be a tenant, that's something I would be concerned about before I signed a lease. But the... Um, the, the Buckhead, and it's only it's Buckhead Investment. That, that they're not they're not called Buckheads, although <laughs> that that maybe shows your lack be. of familiarity with the neighborhood. Be. But but the uh, the point is, if if the city deems it necessary for traffic control, the city can put a light there. The city can do whatever it wants with the street if it believes it's necessary for purposes of traffic control. The uh, if if the Buckheads are going to have uh, try to put out a an off-duty police officer, though, they're going to have to have the permission of the a city in order to, to, to do that. I, I would think that they're going to have to go through great lengths in order to convince people that this is a good place to live from a traffic standpoint. And two very quick uh, follow-up questions. There has been no discussion tonight about the reference in the mayor's letter to the quality restaurant of slightly more than 10,000 square feet. For many of you who may be familiar with some of the restaurants that have recently been opened in the last two years at Boulevard Place, for example, uh, Philippe and uh, RDG, the successor to Cafe Annie, all of those restaurants are approximately 10 to 11,000 square feet. So this is not an insignificant proposal with respect to the restaurant. The traffic generated by that restaurant has not been discussed at this meeting, and I don't know whether or not it has been discussed with the Buckheads. I hope that it will be. It, it, was, it was factored into the plan that was approved during the White administration. There was a quality restaurant that was 
part of it, and that was considered in the the traffic impact analysis. But but you you have to recognize that, and it, it's hardly a science. And I'm not, I'm not a big fa fan of traffic engineers, but the, the the fact of the matter is, it's measured based on the peak at rush hour trips, and and the restaurant would be after that. But it, you know what folks need to understand is that that. There was a plan already approved to do all those things during the White administration. Well, Mr. Feldman, I'd like to make a modest proposal, which is that the mayor designate an official of seniority and rank in the Public Works Department to oversee all aspects of the construction process. We, we are doing that. Including the construction management plan and permitting and supervision of the proposed project under the building code. And second, that the mayor direct this official to consult with a small group of representatives designated by the neighborhood on all principal elements of the construction management plan prior to approval by the department and to meet with the group regularly and hear and address in a reasonable manner concerns raised by the group about problems that are arising during the construction process. Thank you very that was, much. That was the last element on our, on our slide. We, we certainly intend to do that. Uh, Mr. Aiken is the Chief Development Officer for the city. He is an engineer, but the actual city engineer is sitting here on the front row, and he just turned pale when I pointed at him. And, but uh, either Mr. Lathan or uh, a, an appropriate senior person uh, will be assigned to, to bird dog this project. But we, we had already committed to having regular and ongoing discussions through each aspect of this, this project with the neighborhood to make sure that we don't miss anything in terms of neighborhood impact. And I hope that approval will, or that process will include input prior to decisions being made. Thank you very much. Again, we're, we're watching, we have five more, five more minutes. I'm gonna come back over here. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Stephen Bishop. My wife, Susan, and I live in the 1700 block of Roxton Court. I would like to have you focus on traffic as it relates to Ashby and Roxton Court and Bissonnette. The reason for my concern is that in over 30 years ago, I had a three alarm fire in our home and it was difficult for the t fire trucks to make it down Roxton Court at that point because of parked vehicles on either sides of the street. Given that the traffic is going to increase to the levels that we're anticipating, my concern has to do with the ability of emergency vehicles to make entrance and exit to service the citizens. My question is, I understood that the exit from Ashby is supposed to prevent them from turning left, which might help with some of the congestion and might help make it possible for the emergency vehicles to make it down the street, but I don't really see how that's going to be enforced, and I'd like to understand how it will be enforced. It's it's a basically the, the channel. It's 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 the, the curve will be set so that you can only make the right hand out of the the back side of the. Is uh, that in the street or on the property? The on curve. the property. <laughs> well, I still have the concern because I don't I don't see how that's going to prevent them. I mean, they can get uh, on the street, and. You said that they would blow out a tire if they tried to go with that, that it, which I believe they would. They're going to be they're going to be funneled into into one direction. Uh, it's it's not a, not a long not a long space. You know, if someone's idiot and idiot enough to go out and try to flip a, a U turn right in right in front of uh, uh, the, before you get to Bissonnette, uh, certainly I would assume that a police officer that observed that would. Uh, call that an unsafe uh, turn and, and issue a ticket, but that is the mechanism we have put in place to address that. I understand that, and I thank you for what you've done. I'd just like to know that it will be enforced, and how will the city go about enforcing that? The enforcement mechanism is by requiring them as part of their plan, the building plan, to channel the traffic into a right-hand only turn. Uh, there are other areas in the city where that has been done. Uh, people do not always, obviously, obey traffic laws. Uh, 
This is almost as much fun for me as the red light camera issue, just let me tell you. Uh, and a question over here. I, thank you, Mayor and staff. I'm Wayne Shandera. I'm a physician at Baylor and I live on North Boulevard. I have a short comment and a short question. The comment is I fear that we're going to, over the decades and centuries, move from having a neighborhood with the grace and charm of Savannah or Charleston to being something more akin to Sao Paulo or, or Shenzhen, China. Uh, my question is, recently I visited a former Houstonian who lives in Seattle at Horizon House, which was one of the more exemplary elderly centers I've ever seen. And this center had lectures and concerts, and the, the residents, of course, being geriatric, didn't have a lot of use of cars. Is it possible that we could still work with the developers to move this into some other modality, to a center that, looking around the audience, we're very sophisticated and, and not getting any younger, so perhaps uh, we could work together to make something that would help many of us? We, one, one always has hope, but uh, the developers have shown a singular lack of, of interest in working with the neighborhood. And we believe that, again, by making sure that, that we strictly enforce our codes, that, they, that we, we have a mechanism for at least bringing them or their representatives to the table, and uh, we, we, we will do our best. And uh, I thank in advance those who volunteer to represent the neighborhoods, uh, the neighborhood, neighborhoods, I guess I should say, uh, as we go forward. I would, as I said earlier, uh, say that we'll, I'm happy to continue the, the, the conversation. You, you may email me. I, we, can, we can take it outside. Uh, the synagogue uh, offered us until 8.30. They, they graciously extended us an extra 15 minutes. Uh, I know that you took, you've been taking time and energy for the last five years to deal with, actually more than that, to deal with this issue. I thank everyone who is here tonight and I thank you for your care and concern for our city. Ms. Mayor, I don't think the 15 minutes is up, and I'd like to make a comment. Sir, it... My, no, I, my I, name I, is Hayden Burns. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close down the mics and so forth. I'm happy to have a conversation with you. I'll, I'll walk you right out here. 